Hello and welcome to Lost in Translation, where we look at issues underneath the gender microscope. I don't know. Let's go with that. Um, stuff. Stuff. General stuff. General stuff. stuff. Yes. So tonight <laughs> I'm joined by Simona and Kurt. So welcome to the show. Um, so I thought that we'd have a bit of a chat about fashion and clothing because I suppose like going through transition is something that I noticed is that my wardrobe has changed quite considerably um, and it's actually been a recent thing that I've finally reclaimed checked shirts um, because, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, it's, it's the height of fashion, mm, obviously. Mm, well, it's great, great timing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But because when I was very early in transition, I would be wearing check shirts and whenever I was wearing a check shirt, I'd be read as a lesbian and that was always oh. like universal. It would always be when I was wearing a check shirt oh. and I finally sort of built up the courage to to sort of venture back down that. Get, you know, a, get a stripy not, white I know, shirt. Up. I know, I know. <laughs> no check today. No check today. <laughs> Still not quite at that level of comfort. <laughs> I'm, I'm approaching that. Um, how, how, how have, I suppose for you guys, how has that been, that sort of negotiating what you're wearing and clothing and things like that? Well, it's interesting you make that point because uh, the first 12 months was trying to like get really femme. And then I was like, Oh, but I really like, you know, some of the stuff I used to wear, you know, like band T-shirts and all that kind of stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, I think like the first year was trying to yeah, really see how I would go feminising and then, and then it was going back to what I would always wear. So then I had this mix, which was pretty good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then and, and and now I'm at that great point where I'm just starting to put on a bit of weight and stuff, and and those fabulous investments I made on on clothing, you know, in the first few months is like, oh, just trying to fit into those now a little bit. So you know, it's um, yeah, estrogen puts on a little bit of weight in some different places, which is great. You know, I was just. I saw my first stretch marks and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, this is awesome. Just getting it. It's happening, you know? So anyway, and, and, and like chicken fillets on the back of my arms. Like there's a photo of me a couple of weeks ago and I've just got all this stuff coming out the back. And I'm like, yeah, bring it on, you know? I've never so, heard of anyone wanting no. bingo wings. Well, I never wanted it. I just saw it and I just went, oh, my God, it's all working. You know, working. Like as in like, you know, your body's changing. You, mm. And, and you, so you see those things. It's not like yeah. a, oh, just had it you know, coveted, you know, like varicose veins for 20 years, you know, it's not like that. But yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so exciting. Changes it's, are exciting. Seeing your body change is exciting. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make, kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you? Oh, me. Um, cl uh, clothing, I, look, it is exciting. My body changing was so exciting when it first started changing and um, I got really excited to be shopping in the guys section at, at clothing stores. Um, because previously I'd sort of feel a bit too embarrassed to go and look at the guys um, section. I suppose before I started transitioning, I was actually a bit afraid to be called he because um, that's not how I was presenting at that time and I wanted to be seen as she, um, which is it's, it's really hard to explain, but I hope that you can kind of get that. Um, and now that I'm presenting as male, it's certainly he all the way. Um, but it's so much more exciting wearing guys' clothes because they're so much cooler. And um, <laughs> the thing that I struggled with the most was um, the size of my hips because um, guys' clothes, the you know, the pants, the hips are a lot um, smaller. And um, it took me a while um, through transition to actually be happy with buying guys' pants. Um, it's also a lot more helpful buying guys' pants because there's room for, for your packer and your junk and stuff in there. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's good fun. It's mm. good fun buying guys' stuff. I found that with, with guys' pants because, mm. you know, I've got good childbearing hips. Um, and so, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. And so finding a pair of, of guys' pants, like, they would fit, in, you know, and they just never quite yeah. fit. And then, uh, you know, after about a year of testosterone, things started to... You know, yeah. body fat moved around. Which well, the interesting good. thing was, like, as a six foot dude, <laughs> I could never find a pair of pants in, you know, in, you know, wherever. It was kind of like because all mm. the thirty fours had sold out, you yeah. know. Yeah. So and, that, and now I'm kind of still a bit stuffed, you know, because I, I can't a six foot, 
you know, females. They're not making pa pants for me, I can tell you that right now. Really? No. What well, about skirts and dresses and summer dresses? Oh, yeah, things? but you've got to, like, dress to your body shape, and I guess that's yeah, what true. I'm kind of finding out, I guess. So, Still um, finding that out. Yeah, but, yeah. but like, you know, great things, like, you know, I, like, went to the, the, the Architecture Institute Awards and, like, wore this f fabulous, you know, leather quilted dress. Yeah, and I was nice. like, oh, yeah, I can rock that and stuff, and, you know. So that's, yeah. that's the exciting thing is you kind of get to you know, wear those things, I guess, that yeah. you've always wanted to wear. But, yeah, um, yeah I think it's about, uh, ultimately, I think if you can mix your personality before and after transition, I, I, and, and I think that that's not caring about what you're perceived as and more caring about who you are as a person, you, you know. Mm. So mm. I think I've kind of got there, you mm. know. Yeah. You know, Simona, that is, that's actually one of the best bits is being invited to a wedding and for me not being expected to rock up in a dress. <laughs> I can actually <laughs> wear the suit and not look like an outcast, you know, It's because it's acceptable for guys to wear a suit, oh, wear yeah. pants. Mm. Like I had to do a wedding before I transitioned mm. and I had to like present as a dude and I was yeah. just like, oh. Yeah, it's crazy. This is just a nightmare. Yeah, you know? it's a nightmare. Yeah. And because I, I couldn't, because it was kind of like, uh, you know, we don't want you to be like, you know, the distraction. You know? Yeah. I yeah. was like, gee, thanks, that's great. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I had to wear like a, you know, shirt and stuff. But yeah, mm. so now I've got a wedding to go to, I think, in Christmas. And I can just bring out that frock up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can wear that quilted <laughs> leather doll and look look fabulous. Yeah, you know, it'll be awesome. summertime and, and great and heels yeah. and whatever. Yeah, you know, awesome. So, yeah. Any big faux pas that you had early on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I did turn up to work one time and my boss said, looked at my eyes with my makeup and went, are you, are you all right? And I was like, have I had done a bad job on my makeup this morning? Have I, Steve? <laughs> you know, so uh, maybe that. Um, faux pas, yeah, probably, but you know, I've forgotten about them. What about yeah. you, Nate? Have you had <laughs> <any faux pas? laughs> the, the checked shirt. The just the checked and look, shirt. And look, that, that seems a great time to finish on before I talk about just, my faux pas. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for coming on tonight and having a chat. You've been watching Lost in Translation.